asthma lady. Okay, so today we're going to talk about six skills you need to be an asthma educator. Okay, so but first, before we talk about that, please hit the like button, subscribe to us on YouTube, subscribe to us on Google Podcasts. We have so much more content to come. So please hit the like and subscribe button and share. All right. So this episode is to piggyback off uh, last week's episode, which was six reasons why to become an asthma educator. Right. So based off that episode of hearing the asthma lady talk about her experiences and her passion and, you know, how rewarding this career has been. You decide, I want to be an asthma educator. Okay, so today's episode is six skills you need to be an asthma educator. Okay, well, well, a good one anyway, right? Okay, so number one, you need patience. Okay, so you need patience. Um, If you hate to repeat yourself, uh, this is not for you. <laughs> so I'm just going to be straight honest with you because asthma is a complex chronic lung disease. It comes with a lot of information and a lot of these folks, you know, they're going to see you over and over again and they will act like they never heard the information ever in their life. So know that at every visit, you have to go over the inhaler technique. That is a question on the exam. If you are trying to get certified as an asthma educator, don't, don't even think about upping the meds or anything else. You have to check the inhaler technique at every visit because the, you will be surprised with these patients when they tell you the medication is not working and that they show you how they've been taking the, inha the inhaler. It is, uh, it, it, some folks are very creative, okay? Um, so yeah, you know, you, you can say, you can ask a question like, Miss Jackson, uh, tell me how has it been monitoring your asthma and using your peak flow meter? My what? Your peak flow meter? Okay, uh, okay, so how about uh, the asthma action plan? Have you been, you know, go following your asthma action plan? my 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 asthma action plan i don't know what that is the thing the colorful thing that we had last week okay they never heard of it so yeah you have to repeat things over and over again all right so yes patience is uh it is very important <laughs> okay you need to be a good listener yeah um you need to ask open ended questions you can't use those quick yes or no's and you have to ask open-ended questions and you basically just say things like miss jackson hey miss Mar Mar miss rodriguez tell me how your asthma has been lately and get past them the mic pass them the mic let them tell you their story because this is what's going to help you connect the dots and how to um how to help them you know what I'm saying? So you 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 have to let them speak. And you cannot come up with any assumptions just by looking at them. Because you really never know until they give you their story and their version, right? So you have to be a good listener. And some folks, you're gonna you're gonna get some that's just short, you know, they don't want to talk. And you have other folks that are long-winded. They're telling you everything under the sun. And so you kind of have to know how to steer. The conversation to keep them focused but that is very important to be a good um listener number three now you need to you need to have an attitude of turning lemon into lemonade all right when it comes to being an asthma educator because and i say that because depending on the institution or where you're working or who you're providing the service for you may have some resources today to give to your patients and tomorrow you may not have it anymore you understand so you have to be able to be able to work with what you have at that present moment and just keep trying to find resources to give to your patients because that's what you're trying to help them peel back 
the layers of social economical issues that they're facing. So um, you need to be able to produce lemonade with the lemons that you're giving sometimes. And I I know this. So um, I'm I I serve some good lemonade. Okay, because I have faced some things in the past where I've had funding and where I didn't have funding and still expected to provide the service, right? Okay, so yes, that's number three. Number four, you need to be empathetic, all right? So this is really important. You have to understand you got to meet people uh, uh, where they are in life, okay? So you can't just be, and of course, as you know, health healthcare professionals or whatever, we, we know this, but there is a tone that um, as an educator, you do not want to have. You don't want to have that judgmental tone. It's like, um, so you, you know, so, so you still smoking, Miss Jackson? It's like, come on. It's like, you know, after a while, you do want to, you know, chime in and make these, these, these comments can start to come out, but you want to be empathetic. And you, like we said, like you want to allow the patient to talk, to really see where they head, where their head is at and see what their priorities are for that time. So know that you, you may have a patient who you've been with. It might be a case management. It might be, you see them in the clinic, in the community, or you on the floors or whatever. And you've known them maybe for a year. And so, and just know that their priorities may change um, every time you, you, you see them. So, and being empathetic is, is really um, important because it's a, it's a trust and it's a, it's a partnership. And um, you want to make sure that you, you show this and you have this type of tone um, and attitude when you, when you work with folk. Number five, you need to be creative. <laughs> so, and I did mention that um, on the last episode where, where I said why you should be an asthma educator. If you love being creative and thinking outside the box, this is for you. Because like I said, asthma is not, uh, is not lit. <laughs> okay, like talking about it is is boring uh, just to keep it real with you i'm just keeping it 100 it is not uh uh an attend uh something that is interesting to talk about okay so you have to be creative you gotta bring put your personality into it and um imagine you have to provide asthma education to teenagers i mean that was that was, there was an assignment not an assignment but there was a project that we had working with the state department of health and it was it was for high schoolers and working with school based health centers and that's a hard population to work with can you imagine you're trying to provide asthma education and these folks they on the phone they just you know doing their own thing and it's like you just want to hand in your sign in sheet it's like yeah sign the sign in sheet so i can get out of here all right you know so you, you need your sign in sheets for funders so in that situation, what we did was to make a long story short, um, I end up t uh, teaming up with the teen pregnancy prevention program. And you know what? I was like, listen, after sex education, we slid in with the asthma education and trust and believe they were raising their hand. They had a lot of questions. Uh, you can't have sex if, if you can't breathe didn't make sense at the time but it kind of related and and they had the questions they were very very in, uh interested okay so yeah and you you would just be like okay so why is the asthma program with the teen pregnancy prevention program but i made it happen i needed the project i needed it to to work and i needed it uh uh quick okay so yes uh okay number six you need to be able, you need to know how to coach someone to be the best version of themselves. Yeah, so you, you, if you're good 
at, uh, uh, um, once again, you know, listening and just being supportive and, um, you know, like we said, this is, it's, with asthma, a lot of these patients have so much going on and there's so much uh, uh, layers of barriers for them to get to be, to, to become controlled when it comes to their asthma. So know that they need someone that is a, a success partner, right? So like someone that can enforce uh, um, positive reinforcement, that can hold them accountable. It's like, hey, listen, I'm going to do this for you, but you need to go to your, you need to go see your specialist. I will help set up the appointment to, for you to link to an attorney to help you with your housing issue. But you need to go to the appointment. Let's put an alarm on your calendar. You understand? So you need to be able, and when they do something, no matter how, how small it is, you are, okay, you are giving them a round of applause because what you want to do is you want to encourage those little steps, right? So this is all about progress, okay? So being, if, if you good at coaching people through things this is for you all right so that are those are the six did i give you six yes okay <laughs> i think that was six that was number six all right so those are the six skills you need to be an asthma educator so if you have that already you're good to go all right so go and take your exam and put those letters behind your name all right so I hope this helps someone listening today to take control of your career and making solid decisions and not just chasing checks, right? You know, so just like asthma, it's all about taking control. All right. So we are here every Wednesday at 6 p.m. Remember to subscribe to RT Share T on YouTube and on Google Podcasts, all right? So we're going to be here every Wednesday, all right? And remember to invest in yourself and to only compete with yesterday's version of you.